Hi friends, today I am giving a lecture on another example problem on rule CP. In the previous video, we are already solved two example problems on rule CP. Please refer that videos for better understanding of rule CP. Now, in this video, we have to solve another example problem on rule CP. Okay, so derive P conditional, Q conditional S yes, using rule CP if necessary from the premises. So whenever rule CP is required, we have to use a rule CP for the given premises and derive the conclusion P conditional, Q conditional S. Yes. Okay, so here the given premises are P conditional, Q conditional, R comma, Q conditional, R conditional, yes. Okay. So here I am using a rule CP. In the case of rule CP, we have to derive the conclusion P conditional, Q conditional, yes. In that conclusion, so P can be taken as uh, antecedent Q conditional S can be taken as consequent. Okay, this antecedent can be taken as additional premise whenever we are using a rule CP. This additional premise P and the given premises derives the Q conditional S using a rule CP. Okay, so we have to derive Q conditional S yes by taking additional premise P and the given premises. So these given premises and the additional premise P and we have to derive Q conditional S. Yes. Once we are deriving Q conditional S yes, at the last step we have to use the rule CP then we have to write P conditional Q conditional S. Yes. This is the Procedure we have to follow whenever rule CP is used for the given problem. Okay, now, now P can be taken as additional premise. P can be taken as additional premise. Okay. This additional premise this additional premise P and the given premises given premises derive derive Q conditional S. Yes. Okay, so now we have to derive Q conditional S yes by taking additional premise P and the given premises. Okay, so first step, first step in the derivation, I am taking the first premise P conditional Q conditional R is introduced into the derivation by using rule P. Okay, so what we have done in the first step by using rule P, this premise is introduced into the derivation in the first step of the derivation by taking first premise into the derivation. Okay, next I am taking additional premise. So this additional premise P is introduced into the derivation. So here by using rule P, I am introducing additional premise. We have to mention this is the additional premise. So whenever additional premise is taken, we are using rule CP because this can be taken as additional premise in the conclusion. Okay. So here 
this is the second step second step in the derivation okay so now from these two steps we have to derive another formula so by using i11 so see the i11 step p comma p conditional q implies q so here p is there so in the p conditional q here p is there in the place of q q conditional r is there p p conditional this entire thing can be treated as q okay p p conditional q implies q in the place of q what is the q conditional r so p comma p conditional q conditional r implies q conditional r by using implication rule i11 okay so by combining these two steps we have to combine these two steps 1 comma 2 this is the next step in the derivation that is a 3 we are getting q conditional r okay using a rule t applied on which step 1 and 2 1 and 2 and which implication rule i am using i 11 i 11 rule i am using okay now this q conditional r can be written as negation q r r by using e 16 so p conditional q logically equivalent to negation p r q okay here q conditional r is there according to the e 16 i am writing negation q r r okay using e 16 rule okay same step i am not changing 1 comma 2 this is fourth step this can be written as negation q r r okay only this step can be modified okay so by using rule t applied on which step that is the third step and which implicate which equivalence rule i am using that is e16 i am using okay now now this premise is introduced into the derivation by using rule p so according to the rule p i am introducing this premise q conditional r conditional yes into the derivation after four i am writing fifth step so fifth step in the derivation okay so in this line sequence steps are there in this line we have to combine any two steps i am writing this one otherwise next step i am taking okay next one this can be written as by using e16 rule q conditional r conditional s so this entire thing can be taken as example r q conditional r can be written as negation q r r okay so according to this one r conditional s can be written as negation r r s by using rule e16 okay so now same step it can be modified sixth step it can be written as negation q r again it can be written as negation r r s okay so this is a rule t applied on which step fifth step and which rule i am using that is e16 rule i am using okay here r conditional s can be written as negation r r s according to this one here q conditional r conditional s total can be written as negation q r r conditional s can be written as negation r r s okay next after that we have to observe this step and this step from these two steps negation q r is common we have to we have to separate negation q r from these two steps now we have to combine in this uh, one comma two step and five step so that is one comma two comma five next step in the derivation that is the seventh step we have the uh, by combining this step and this step okay negation q r r and negation q r negation r r s rule t we are applying 
फोर्थ स्टेप एंड सिक्स्थ स्टेप एंड आई नाइन सो आई नाइन रूल इज पी कामा क्यू इम्प्लाइज पी एंड क्यू सो दिस एंटायर थिंग कैन बी टेकन एज पी यू दिस एंटायर थिंग कैन बी टेकन एज क्यू पी क्यू इम्प्लाइज दिस इज पी दिस इज क्यू पी एंड क्यू ओके बाई यूजिंग इम्प्लीकेशन रूल आई नाइन अप्लाइड ऑन फोर्थ एंड सिक्स स्टेप so here in this two we have to common negation q r negation q r common remaining is r and negation r r yes so negation q r this is r and negation r r yes here r and negation r we are already know that it is a false negation q r false r yes false r yes is nothing but in the place of yes we are substituting true value false or true is nothing but true in the place of yes we are substituting false value false or false is nothing but false so whatever the truth value we are substituting in the place of yes we are getting the same result okay so that f r s yes is nothing but s yes. negation q r s yes, we are getting from this two steps fourth step and the sixth step so we are getting negation q r s yes. okay here so this step can be written as so 1 comma 2 comma 5 so this is the eighth step so this can be written as according to the rule e16 so negation q r s yes can be written as q conditional s yes. so q conditional s yes, i am writing using a rule t applied on which step that is the seventh step and which equivalence rule i am using that is the e16 rule i am using okay so already we are getting q conditional yes we have to derive already q conditional yes in the last step after eighth step we can go for ninth step and uh, ninth step here we are getting p conditional q conditional yes using a rule cp here i am taking p as additional premise so we have to derive q conditional s yes. by using rule cp p conditional q conditional s yes, we have to write okay so this is somewhat difficult step so please observe carefully okay see so here r and negation r is nothing but false false or something is nothing but something negation q r s according to the e16 we have to write q conditional s yes. we have to derive already q conditional s yes from the given premise and the additional premise in the final step we have to write p conditional q conditional s yes. okay so in this way we have to solve the given problem by using rule cp so thank you thank you for watching this video if you like this video please share this video to your friends and classmates here therefore p conditional q conditional s yes, is a valid conclusion is a valid conclusion okay so please subscribe my channel name so divya srinivas rao